It's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Elijah, Nima, Akashat. Zuberi, how are you doing today? I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, cost and all of that is just pushing me. You know? Cost, Abe? Yes. I took a break from so many things I was committed to in the year. And so I'm rushing to finish up before the year ends. And my landlord thought it was okay to disconnect water. Yeah. For three weeks. I was talking to the That's agent the at the office, at the law firm. And I was talking to him and he was saying, eh, you can't pressure me. And I said, Oga, do you know that water is about convenience? As in, if I want to go to, I'm a Muslim woman. I use water a lot. The reason I moved from where I was coming from is part of this. Mm. You cannot not do water in three. It's an emergency. It's urgent. And I must not come to the office before the end of the week and not see that this water issue has been sorted out. So I don't know. We pay service charge in the building itself. Mm. I don't know what the issue is for him. He said three weeks now. Wow, My secretary great. has been going back and forth and he's making it seem like he's all, they are just pressure. Pressure, okay. I never yeah, start yeah. pressure. So no, no pressure. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I was go just going to lament about food prices as well. Mm -hmm. you know, there are a few things that I like to get. But the minimum is butter. Minimum. And butter That's is 5,000 yeah, plus. 5, <laughs> for yeah. one. Those yeah. uh, bars. Yeah. Yes, bars. it's 5,000 yeah. plus. I wanted to make pizza the other day. You know? <laughs> I was I like, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, 3,000, 3,500, mm. 2,5, you know, 5,000 plus time. for a while. Yeah. Eh, so, what are they buying now? The, the, same, the carry goods on the other one. They want to 5K for a long time. Yeah. Hey. Mm. Ah, okay, maybe the place will be fine. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of. How are you doing? I'm all right. Today is the first of November. Happy Yay, Oh, of course. Everybody. We're excited. We, we made it this far. We made it this far. We are grateful to God. And on Friday is the 3rd of uh, November. I'm going to be at the Lagos International Trade it's Fair. There. House of BC will be there live with Yay. all our wares. We are doing it. It's very affordable. Discount. Everything. Just come and carry. I don't want to carry anything back home. You have children's wear? Uh, I yes. have, I have, yes, I have, I have. So when you come, you come to the fair. Yes, it's children's wear, yeah, yeah, the prices, where? yes, just for children, sure. for men, for men, for yeah. women, everybody. Just come. Come. I rather buy it now than later. Let me, whatever the, for the case. It's already later. It's already later. And I November is later. Honestly, if you start shopping September, October, October, those right. days, but the economic situation may not allow you no, no. to do all no. of that. But anyhow, just come and support your girl. Yes. So my daughter came to me and told me that she was asked to get a dress. So they're having some kind of event in school sometime, and they told her that she's going to be one of the ladies ushering the prom queen. Wow. So she now wants a prom dress. And I told wow. her that the dress I made for you for your graduation... She can wear perfect. it. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's lovely. I spent a lot of money. And she's arguing with me that she can't. That she she's wants a new one. Now. I said, ah, it was not a few months ago that... <laughs> yeah, that yeah, is school. <laughs> Now you just entered now. I said the dress is too pretty. And this girl say? Yeah, girls she's insisting, telling me, no, I sh I'm like, honey... We will die. What about that? We will die. It. Is your problem is that it looks like the same thing. Uh, I, will, die it. I will die a different color. I can splash a few colors on it, make it look different, or put Don't some ribbons. Yes, please. No, you can be creative with it. Yeah, yeah, you can. yeah it's, you it's, can. Well, it's a way to teach her also going ribbons. forward how yes. she can mix up. Yeah. Insisting please. on interest. I'm like, no way. In this economy, forget that about it. That dress was so beautiful, I remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 you only got it once. You know, auntie, I'm wearing that dress. I'll tell her when that's what add, add different colored ribbons mm, for her. Just do something. Just so demanding this. Just put a brooch. Don't. I don't think ribbons. Oh, you, you can, you can be color. creative. You can be as creative as exactly. You, again, you can change the sleeves. It yeah. could be different <laughs> sleeves. Hey. I'm telling you, you can oh, improvise. Mm. You can't spend any money. Oh, yes. Yeah. Hey, God Make help us. So. Christmas hmm. is around the corner. Make a day good. Before you know it, we didn't prom dress. Everybody has come doing... to me with all sorts of demands. Eh, my father just died. Eh, can it just happen? Right? Eh, we know it's the season. I know you there around for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the season. Somebody must Before know. Before you out. start, I say, I'm doing shop. <laughs> I'm actually looking. As, I, as you're talking to me now, I'm looking oh, for money. Oh, it's where we'll be God fine. Help us. Let us go in break. For all of us. When we return, look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Fubara, Wike, Field, Tinumbu, PDP governors mediate. NEDC lifts victims of Maiduguri market fire with 2 billion naira. Lagos secures $1.35 billion deals for 4th million bridge and blue rail. Federal workers wage award 2.1 trillion naira supplementary budget. Natasha is Kogi Central Senator. 
Motion on induction, injunction, court finds Aida Tewa and LIRS just 34 firms for failing to remit taxes. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, in an exciting news, um, the Appeal Court has confirmed Natasha Apoti Udwaga as the um, valid elected senator for Kogi Central in Kogi State. So we we'll <coughs> remember the drama that went forth and um, she couldn't be returned by INEC. But the um, election tribunal returned her, confirmed her, and the appeal court has also confirmed her now. I'm hoping this will st um, stall all litigations yeah. on this matter, finally. Congratulations Just, to her. Yes, yes. She's a long a strong, battle coming. Strong, very strong woman. You know, she's been through it all. We interviewed her on the show mm -hmm. at the time when she was in the APC, I think, before she moved into the PDP, back and forth. They just they don't want a woman to finally got her mandate. Yes. yes. Happy for her. I'm so excited. Congratulations. Ah, hey, hey. only before election, they dig gully. Um, huge gully. She made sure she covered it. Like, you know, this is what they say. You yes. stick to it yes. no matter what. Yes. You fight it. Congrats. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me take um, Lagos State Governor Babajide Olushola Songolu has signed a partnership with Afrexim Bank and the. Um, African Caribbean Trade Investment Forum at the African Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum in Guyana. Um, it was an, it was a it was a partnership with the African Bank and Access Bank for infrastructure projects. So the governor um, had signed the deal to conclude to include the Fourth Mainland Bridge, the Omu Creek project, and the Blue Line from Mile Two to Komaiko. He said that his, his, his management is um, committed to creating the future of Lagos State. He's quite excited about it because it's a huge project. I come to him, he said that um, it was a significant moment in Guyana at the Afri-Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum. They've secured a partnership for these massive projects of $1.352 billion for Lagos. And um, their vision for Lagos is becoming a reality with the Lekki Ekme International Airport and the Lagos Food System and the logistics hub in Ekwe. So many things happening in Lagos, and mm. hoping that the future indeed is going to be bright. Yeah. Yes, I have a field show. So Phoenix sues David Doe and demands 2.3 billion Naira and an apology. So the organizers of the annual Worry Again concert, Brown Hill Investments Company, they've instituted a 2.3 billion suit against David as David Doe over a breach of agreement and contract. Um, um, Pinnick is asking the court to award $2 billion as general damages against Davido and his music label. He is also asking the court to, to award against Davido the sum of $150 million as legal and professional fees and an additional sum of $30 million as the cost of filing the suit. He said that he, um, Davido had approached Pinnick um, at the Abuja airport and he was the one that asked to be engaged during, for this um, concert. And Pinnick was hesitant at first, but you know, eventually they agreed, and um, they agreed for it um, to be um, Davido to be paid 70 million naira. They said that after that agreement, they sent him 94,500 US dollars, which was the equivalent of 70 million at the time, um, April 6th. And of course, those of us that follow social media, we know how what has happened yep. since then. He didn't show up. Then there was a back and forth. Penny mm -hmm. called him out on online, and Davido responded by saying, "Look at you. Who, who gives you the moral justification to be calling out anyone? After all, um, you have, in your own way, been corrupt in so many other ways." So he's saying, "Okay," and then I heard silence. So I guess he was. He decided we'll meet in court. So okay. here we are. Yeah. So treasury-funded federal workers are to be paid the thirty-five thousand naira wage award separately from their regular salaries. Uh, this was, you know, disclosed last night. So the funding for the payment um, for federal workers and other palliative packages have also been captured in the two point one trillion. 2023 Supplementary Appropriation Bill, uh, which is awaiting lawmakers' approval. Uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, yesterday uh, sent the extra budget bill to the National Assembly. Uh, you know, also talked about uh, boosting critical infrastructure and providing palliative to cushion the effects of the subsidy removal for Nigerians. So the director in the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation uh, was the one also who confirmed the story and said that the workers have already started receiving their salaries. However, the committee is, is uh, still working on the 35,000 naira palliative wage and is putting finishing touches to the modality. So right now the government is owing uh, the workers two months mm. um, 
salary. additional wage. No, okay. no, their salaries, they are getting their salary, but they are still working on this 35,000 Naira additional. So they haven't paid them for September and October. When they are done with the modalities, they will pay them. Okay, let's move quickly now to the punch. Tinubu PDP governor stopped for Barra's removal protesters arrested. Appeal court clears Sylvia for Bayosopo, finds challenger a million naira. On your dam, when communities panic over fresh flooding. FG budgets 552.6 billion naira for arms and anti terror fight. Senate launches fresh probe into naira redesign. And Lagos secures 1.3 billion naira, fourth million bridge, and others. Okay, which story? Senate launches fresh probe into Nara redesign. So we recall the CBN Nara redesign and also the cashless policy and all the crises that followed um, thereafter. So um, the Senate has launched a fresh investigation and this probe was moved by or was raised by Senator Adams of Shomole and he, uh, you know, to, to investigate this. Um, so as we know, the Central Bank of Nigeria had redesigned all major Nara, um, Nara notes. 100, 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes, and, um, which were supposed to start circulation December 2022. So um, the Senate is saying that uh, when they finally get to meet with CBN, they would like to, uh, the committee that's sitting on this meets with CBN, they would like them to bring documents that show um, how much was printed, how much was spent printing the new Naira notes so that this can help the investigation. Okay, so the Court of Appeal in Abuja yesterday um, um, reversed the uh, Federal High Court's um, judgment that disqualified Timmy Pierre Silva from contesting the governorship elections in Bayelsa State. So this interesting suit brought by Demuso Soyefa Kolomo mm -hmm. and a, a member of the APC was contending that Silva, having been sworn in twice, had not contested an election. And he referred to the May 29, 2007 to April 15, 2008 uh, period while he occupied office before he was removed by a, a, a tribunal and in, in the May 27, 2008 to, to um, 2012 when he also occupied office saying those account for <clears throat> two, swearing in twice. But the court, the appeal court reversed the judgment saying the uh, person who brought the action himself did not have locus in the matter and shouldn't have come before the court and so they restated um, mm. him. So he's... Um, Governorship, uh, gubernatorial ambitions still intact. I was going to focus a bit on the picture story here in Punch. I'm not, I don't know if it's legal. There are kids here carrying posters. I don't know if, it's, if you think this is right about the governor. You know, let my mommy. I don't know if it's right for you to get kids. What, what are they? Says that protesting? allow the governor to give my mommy money for small scale business so I can go to school. We children need to see him for free education. This is part of the protesting going on in River State oh, and that okay. happened with the Fubara case and Wiki. And I'm thinking, is it right to put kids to protest? I don't know, it's just a question. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think it's against... It's, it's, it's a weekday, it's on a weekend, they're probably supposed to be in school or something. But it's something worth looking at. But mm -hmm. let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing the punch. Let me take the story. And the federal government has set aside 575.6 billion naira in its special funding project to boost the fight against insecurity and persecute ongoing um, anti-insurgency war. war. Um, under this, a total of 184.25 billion was approved for the purchase of military equipment, arms, and ammunition. The latest figure was contained in the 2.18 trillion supplementary budget for the 2023 fiscal. Yeah, approved by FEC on Monday, if you recall, uh, there was a meeting on Monday, and of that 552.6 billion for, for the Ministry of Defense, 140, 184 is for the purchase of equipment, and um, also the, the also allocated 147.03 billion to upscale internal operations against Boko Haram, bandits, kidnappers, and other anti-insurgency wars. So they are putting quite a bit of the budget that has been approved 
war against insurgency and uh, acquire more equipment and ammunition? Yeah, so a recent downpour um, is causing another flood scare for mm. residents of the flood-prone communities at the Ugu and Shu River Basin Authority. Uh, they are considering to have another round of water released from the Oya mm -hmm. River Dam. So, um, <coughs> so according to the story, they said the dam management had alerted some stakeholders in the flood-prone communities about the development. And the chairman of the Riverview Estate in Isheri, Abayomi Akinde, was the one who told um, the correspondent that the move might lead to another flood crisis in that area. It says residents of the communities as Isheri, Arepo, Lafenwa, Warewa, and other adjoining areas there were displaced by the, cause, uh, the flood because of the excessive release of water from the dam. And um, they said they normally would take permission before releasing water from the dam. But sometimes when the rain comes up like that, it, it, it sort of goes overboard mm. what they can hold in. So they have to keep releasing it. But the communities are saying they're having a conversation with the people managing the river dam to see how they can sort of reduce <coughs> the way they release the water into the can community. Can we also do something? I know it's capital intensive. Another way of you know, using, directing this water to some dry areas around the, mm. the south to farms to farms yeah. why well, once we release the water to the same direction every, every year every year oh, like said they do us okay it's a problem let's solve it please daily sun end of road for wanted deadly bandits amid kidnapping of 2025 naira gains strength against <clears throat> dollar as cbn denies plans to redominate um currency lagos inland revenue shuts 34 companies over tax debts vows to close more tinubu intervenes in the wicked fubara clash Breach of agreement, Ahmad Jupinik sues Davido, demands 2.2 billion, 2.3 billion now. Oh, that's a lot of money. And a public apology, obviously. Upo community wins as Supreme Court resolves protracted land tussle with ABBA. Um, appeal court affirms Natasha winner of Kogi Central senatorial seat. Okay, which other stories? Uh, major headline, uh, end of road for wanted deadly um, bandits. So the Nigerian um, army and they operate, that are operating in the Sangeko forest in Kebi State. They said they've neutralized a suspected notorious bandit um, commander, nicknamed Mainasara. Um, two other bandits uh, believed to be part of his gang as well were neutra uh, neutralized. They said that these group of bandits would carry out obnoxious attacks and kidnappings on the communities in the areas. But um, the army, on a routine patrol of the forest around 7.30, um, suddenly engaged these bandits. Of course, there was gun duel to try to escape. But um, thankfully, they were able to gun this kingpin down and, some, and a couple of his um, gang members. They retrieved some of their bikes. And um, the um, army is also saying that uh, their successes is equal to the proactive stance of the Kebi state governor particularly with the provision of crucial logistics to security personnel operating in the state. Okay, so the Upo community wins, um, the Supreme Court wins, as Supreme Court resolves the dispute land toss that they've had over the years with Abagana and Abba um, uh, communities in the Duno Kofia local government area of Anambra State. So they have been in court for years, and um, the Supreme Court yesterday unanimously di uh, dismissed the case for lack of merit citing that the um, grounds on which of the, sorry, the case was anchored on grounds that the Court of Appeal Rules 2016 do not empower the appellant to bring that application to register an appeal, which was earlier struck out. So they've been at court over this issue, and the chief judge, despite an earlier Supreme Court judgment, assigned the case to some judges in, in the state in different other courts. And so they continued the tussle, but now it's final as it's done and rested. And the community, the uh, Upo community, uh, won this. I hope it will bring peace to the communities and will no longer have um, uh, yes. no fights. So the Lagos State Internal Revenue Service, LIRS, has shot 34 corporate organizations for failing to remit personal income taxes of their employees and for non-remittance of consumption taxes by operators in the hospitality sector to the Lagos State Government. Mr. Shei Alade, Director of the Legal Services of um, LIRS, was the one who you know, talked about this. And he said that um, their actions have caused the state government to lose a lot of money said the money that they are not um, the money they were not able to pay was about 356 million naira and initially the 
uh, agency had reduced their enforcement activities just to see how people can voluntarily you know comply to pay their taxes but it now seemed like certain companies and hotels just naturally chose to evade the taxes so now they are going to renew enforcement activities of the services and they are targeted at such companies uh, restaurants hotels and event centers and it's saying that the primary goal is to secure compliance with the remittance of consumption and the personal income taxes which will enable the state government to carry out the things that they need to carry out to develop the uh, state and so for those people who collect taxes from their uh, employee, employees are not remit the taxes they will mm. have penalties to face. And so some of them are using these taxes to do other businesses instead of remitting it to the state government. So this is a warning mm. that anyone who does not file their tax returns or engage in tax evasion are, are considered to be criminals and they would have financial penalties uh, likely go to jail. Right. So yesterday's conf confirmation of the Inspector General of Police started the conversation uh, about the reform that is required for the Nigerian police force. The president has therefore formed a special committee to look at the gaps in the 19 Nigeria's 1999 constitution uh, with a view to bring harmony and synergy, closing in all the gaps with technology and manpower to the Nigerian police force. Uh, they also, also Dr. Um, the governor of um, Ogun State, he, who is also uh, was at the event, said that um, the Na National Police Council observed that no meaningful reforms has taken place in the police since 1861. Therefore, he said that the new set of committee would come up with ideas that would lead to reforms that would characterize the new police force and also um, the plan to do everything to ensure there's inclusiveness with the people and they hopefully when the constitution is reviewed and they, they have more authority within the police. Let's move on quickly now to the vanguard. Rivers, Tinubu waits in. Wiki Fubara meets Greece in Abuja. We can't, re we want to return, but we can't, says recalled on voice. PDP governors welcome Supreme Court judgment, slam contradictory ruling on Play 2. Electricity, operators seek cost reflective tariff as subsidies hit 3.34 trillion. And uh, let's see, no plan to redominate Naira, says CBN. Samuelu, Afrexin Bank, Access Bank, seal $1.35 billion partnership pact. Okay. Major headline. Yes, mm. so <laughs> the president has um, you know, intervened in the wala happening between the FCT minister and the um, governor of River State. So yesterday they both attended an event at the um, Asu Villa and they were seen to be dressed in peaceful colors, white, white. They shook hands, they enter, mm. no fight, okay. and... They were, the president also brought both of them into his inner chambers after that meeting to, inter, to uh, discuss with both of them. So we are hoping that after this peace has been broken between... I think between it was rather prompt for the president, which is good. I love I mean, that. That's very... Usually, mm -hmm. the president they doesn't... Demand, yeah, yeah they they allow to, it to linger. linger and it to brew. Mm -hmm. But the president quickly called the guys, yeah, 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 just let's have We need to stop this. Yeah. That state is such a very sensitive state. Mm. Yeah. I just feel that the people there, many of them are like, we okay, don't want something to just... Es yeah, escalate. escalate. So it was good yeah. that it was. It was good that it was. Uh, so we have our <laughs> envoys, our ambassadors in different parts of the world that have been asked to return. <clears throat> and, um, you know, they had given them a timeline when they should come back. And they said, as of yesterday, that was when it ended. But many of them are still stranded abroad, they said. They cannot return because of funds. They say that um, there's the, um, there's an amount, there's a money that is supposed to, send, to be sent to them. They call them AIEs so, to facilitate their return, but they haven't been sent any funds since mm -hmm. June. And so they're just waiting on that before they can all come back. As we know that um, our president had recalled them, I think it was um, September 2nd, and still. I mean, it's, uh, this is embarrassing. I don't know, is it possible that monies haven't been sent to them, that there isn't enough money for them to return? Mm. If that's the case, it is not good. If this is funds that is meant to be made available to them, then please, this should be done quickly so that we don't have sort of embarrassing conversation. Sure is about funds. I mean, that's what they said. So based on what they have said, what... Um, Initially, they said yeah. their kids have to finish school. BC took it the other day. Mm. And today, nice morning. Okay, so the PDP Governors Forum welcomed the judgment of the Supreme Court on the party's petition against the outcome of the presidential elections at the end of the party's quest for presidency. However, they expressed shock over what is described as deliberate targeting of the party's elected officials in Plato states using pre-election cases against 
the prescription of the Supreme Court. According to, um, to the Nigeria Governors Forum, uh, they're saying that um, they believe and they restate their faith and confidence in the judiciary to do justice in political, uh, in political cases and other courts. On the, they're also worried <coughs> that um, they urge the judiciary at the apex level to ensure that their jurisprudence is not distorted. They remain vigilant in the struggle for democracy and good governance in the country. And they're referring specifically to what's going on in Plato State. Okay. Yes, so um, Abuja stakeholders and operators of the Nigerian electricity supply industry, NESI, are urging the federal government to allow a cost-reflective tariff in the sector to improve liquidity across the value. Uh, they said that the sector had not delivered in objectives of the privatization 10 years ago. And one of the reasons this is so is because the... There's poor liquidity and major contributor in the market failure. So um, they spoke across panel sessions on distribution and metering on the ongoing Nessie market particip participants and stakeholders roundtable in Abuja yesterday. And they are saying so far the federal government has spent about 3.34 trillion in the past 10 years to subsidize the sector. They are saying that they are supposed to be allowed that cost reflective tariff. That sometimes it's supposed um, they, are, they are usually supposed to be increasing or reviewing their prices every, every six years. months okay. yes every six months mm -hmm. looking at the uh, various the indices services. like inflation lack of forex and the economic situation in the country but now they are not able to do that and so government is now subsidizing and because it's entering their book as a form of debt they are not able to get funds to run the um, company well the also uh, fact also that um a lot of people do not have meters is also eating into what is affecting that um um um, area. industry and that area. So with less than 45% of customers metered, uh, people are just using aggregate um, prices to take their bill, which is not working for the sector. So there are a lot of uh, people who also need their meters to be changed. And these are some of the issues that the government needs to work on and allow them that free flow so that they can give cost reflective tariffs. Okay, that's all we can take on front page. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Today, our hot topic is about betting. Many of us know family, friends, acquaintances who engage in this very addictive practice of betting. Let me share a few data with you. So according to a report published by March, uh, in, in March, actually, 2023, by a company called Orange Business Intelligence Technology, Nigeria's betting industry reached over $2 billion in revenue in 2020 with over 60 million Nigerians between 18 and 40 spending $5.5 million daily. Hmm. Let me say that again. 18 to 40 year old spending $5.5 million daily. Hmm. A national sports industry policy from the same year estimated that the industry could generate up to $4.7 billion in annual revenue, create 10 million jobs and generate between 1.5 to 3 percent of GDP over 10 years. Okay. Now, the question, therefore, is: With this prospect in this industry, is it a morally upright thing for us to support? Many of us have families who are completely addicted to this act. In some countries, it's against the law to bet. In many religions, it's against religion to engage in betting. However, many people do bet. On a daily basis, and we're seeing the numbers coming from Nigerian in the, in the industry in Nigeria, about $5 billion annually. Mm. What are your views on betting? What can we do? What, what do you think we should as a people, as a government, as communities, as churches, as mosques? What do we dis how do we discuss and talk around betting? Join the conversation 081-270-53687. 091-390-76948. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. If you also have family members, loved ones who are also into betting, call in and let us know uh, why they bet. They have your, your own thoughts on this and um, we would like to hear your views. 
Um, Nima, let me start with you. What are your own general thoughts on betting? So, of course, morally, I'm against betting, but I've found out it's a very popular uh, eel. Is it safe to say? Uh, eel, yes, yeah. Yes, because it's legal, but it's, it's, a, it's an eel in the society, and it's sudden. I used to think that it was for, you, you know, something that further impoverished the poor, because it was largely the poor. If you see, look at it now, 65 million people, you check, it's mostly those who cannot even afford who should not even be doing it, who should be looking for so, more sustainable means of uh, income, who bet. But I found out recently <laughs> that even the very well employed consider betting or hitting a jackpot a big deal. Hmm. They've simplified betting to, you know, you can do it on your phone now, you don't have to queue up at a kiosk and do it. You can do it from the comfort of your bedroom. So people just continue the habits and it's such a downward slide kind of habit. I don't see the growth. For every 48 Naira you make, you have lost 248, not even 148, like I said earlier, 248 Naira betting, if you calculate the cost. So we're sitting together recently, a young boy who's usually doing this betting. We're just, I was just playing and probing him that, ah, ah you want to say, ah, t, ah hey, we, we, I bet something, the number, the number I got for 14,000, and that's ah, 40,000. He must have lost more than that amount betting. Calculate it too. And the poor boy just sat, sat down in reflection and said, I didn't look at it like that. You know, it's just 100 naira, 100 naira. But, but, but I finally. If you look at the fact how we the... love sports, like really, the most, the most of our betting in Nigeria is somewhat always related to sports, mm -hmm. where people bet on winning. mean the privilege, the elite betting. No, no, even no, 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 some people bet on numbers, numbers. Against sports, others they for, bet against something. For, 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 for money. Football. Yeah, different things. It's usually, well, based on sports. the data I'm seeing yeah. here, yeah. most it's betting sports. in Nigeria is usually sports related. Yes. Mm. Now, this is something that everybody loves football. Mm. And it, just, it seemed rather Games. like, we're like just, just having fun. Let me just see if, if, if you can bet this, if it's, whatever I win. But how did it get to points where it's, where it's now seen morally wrong? Because uh, it's just you having fun and betting with your friends. Uh, well, I think it's, morally ethically wrong because it's um it's not something that is meant in any way to uplift the person involved it's a way that you are taking advantage of the vulnerable taking advantage of their weaknesses knowing people who are unable to even maybe any any living you care about you know you don't care about their well-being or their welfare it's how to just get money away from them so i guess that's what makes betting and gambling a problem um and it is you know what we have most of here in nigeria is the betting especially betting against sports thankfully we don't have those casinos imagine what nigerians <laughs> would have been doing you know when it's widespread across america people would sell off everything just to go there and i was reading i wanted to uh, you know, I checked Google for like the psychology behind why people would keep betting, even though they keep losing. They said that it's, there's something called the gambler's fallacy. That is a mistaken belief that if an event occurs repeatedly, a different, uh, a different outcome will occur. But it's never the case. Usually, nine out of ten times, you get the same outcome. And so, um, it's really about mindset. Uh, many people, especially for those who are like maybe in the low income brackets, Everybody's just looking for something, somewhere, luck, you know, and you just, you hear the stories of someone who never had any money before, who was just living a really poor life. All of a sudden, the person put in his very last one naira. And, and then, before you know it, he's now a millionaire. Leonka. You, you know, you now become a millionaire. But even <coughs> people abroad, they, you know, really looked at this. And they said many of those who have won money through bettings and through gamblings like this, within the first one year, maximum two years, that easy. money is gone because you did not even work yeah. to get it. So the principles of even getting the money, making the money it's and keeping the money and multiplying it, you do not have. So in every way, this is something that we should try to discourage. But like many things in societies, smoking, drinking, you know, there are things that we do that are not morally or ethically right but we have pushed it because it earns money for the economy. Yes. It brings jobs for the economy. So it does not matter where the money is come from, the end justifies the means. And I really, I don't know any country that would want to put that aside to, you know, um, to put that sort of funds that come from, from the easy money, actually, for the mm. government, you know, yeah, to do something 
yeah. morally right for their people. So, BC, it's expected from this gambling industry, expected to experience an annual growth rate nearly 10% to reach $365 million by 2027, if we continue at this rate. What are your thoughts? Because, so, there are two things. We need something to help boost our economy. People are spending, this no money, no money. Not Nigeria are spending $15 on average every single day. Not with bet for betting. Not through betting. That would be robbing Peter to people. And that's not what we need for a sustainable economy. Uh, this betting, so betting, gambling, loto, they are all, I want to put them in the same category. Um, I know that it's been happening for as long as we can remember, even back in the olden days where they would have these local fights, you know, those uh, mm, wrestling mm. that we do in the villages, and then people, you bet against each other. Ah, that boy will beat that one, you know, and people drop money. So it's been uh, something that as long as uh, sports and um, entertainment has been on, betting is like the evil that just accompanies it because people must always, you know, the way they compare celebrities, you know, some people can decide to bet. These people are doing something. I bet this person will win. Even BBN. When they are doing BBN, people bet against each other that this girl will win or that one will win and all of that. And it hasn't worked for us because what happens when you win the first time? One of the reasons why we must not even engage in things like this. It gives you that um, endorphin, that dopamine, that excitement. You have won something and they call it beginner's luck because... You keep waiting to have that high again. You keep waiting to have that feel again. And you start borrowing money, you start getting things. I've seen people who have sold their properties just to be able to win again. And they keep keeping putting that money, putting that money. At the end of the day, they don't get that win. But because they have tested the win maybe one or two times, it keeps drawing them in. It becomes addictive. It becomes like a drug. You have to do whatever it takes to just get that win. And I like the um, point that Miriam you know, raised as well, that people who have won something are not able to sustain it. And one of the reasons this um, is not sustainable is because your frequency is not at the level of the amount of money you have won. You cannot hold it. There's something about hard work and process and success. Because you are working, you are working, you're believing, you're thinking about it, you're hoping for it, you are seeing the pro you are taking it one day at a time, you get yourself your mentality, your frequency, your energy ready for that thing that you're getting. And when you get it, you are able to sustain it because you have raised your frequency to that level. What happens with betting is because you, you have a very low frequency of Eguadero. Let me not call it poverty. Eguadero, right? And you go and win 50 million. Your frequency cannot hold that money. Before you realize what's happening, you've spent it on nonsense and you go back. I've never seen anybody who betted once, twice, three times and set up a business with that fund. So we need to look at what happens with their lives. Okay, so but why are we worried the about the, those who are betting and not focusing more on the benefit of our economy? So imagine $5 billion and government is able to tax that. Do you know how much money it comes into? So these are adults, not children betting. Because, I mean, we have all these horse racing bettings abroad. We have all these, I mean, it's, it's a legal job to do. It's just that we have to be properly regulated. So we're going to go on a break. When we come back, Let's see, I mean, are we going to focus, because of the, um, the immoral part of it, it's like, it's like cigarette the industry. The negative effects. So, so the cigarette industry is yes. huge. Yes. Yes, cigarettes are bad for your health. Mm -hmm. it's, it's morally wrong. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The revenue the, the, the tobacco industry is bringing to, to the, 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 the big economy. nations. Mm -hmm. we, we, the data is there. We're just going to break. When we come back, we continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing betting and uh, we'll probably focus now on the moral of the story because the truth is that the, the people will tell you that the economic impacts, there's, there's a positive, um, there's some kind of economic positivity to um, the betting industry. The fact that it actually, if it's properly taxed, um, can contribute considerably to um, development of any country. And we've seen it happen in, in many, many countries over the years. Some countries will boost 
of how betting was a major source of their initial um, development. However, in our country today, many families are dealing with addictive children, mm -hmm. addictive spouses, addictive sons and loved ones who bet everything they have. They mm -hmm. bet their properties, they bet their, their cars, they, they bet their so many things they have just because of that moment or that thrill they get from that, from, from that, from that act. And that's the conversation we want to have today. The, the, um, the, 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 end, the, the end side of betting. Let me let me come to you. Zima. It's not empowering. At the end of the day, there's even a Yoruba saying that if somebody gets to to commit to betting, the person who in the long run never make it will be an unfortunate mm. kind of person. So it's not something that empowers. That's why I feel that for everything religion bounds, if you calm down and look at the reason, the rationale behind it, you will see that it is for common good. How can somebody start this as a means to empowerment? At the end of the day, you only empower the companies who are calculating this money, who are asking government to now task. Those companies never really have issues. Now we have young influencers, everybody saying, use my code, popularizing it the more. The one small uh, sketch you're watching, they have entered it, use my code, code this and that. Everybody is becoming, it's worrisome. And I think that at this point, even though it is legal, government must then regulate Government must then regulate because when it becomes popular, every youth, every Nigerian youth, see them sitting. Yeah. The reason they still in traffic is because of betting or to use drugs. That's they take to do, to feed this. They take it's endless. It's, that circle is is not helping anybody at the end of the day. So yes, we've made it legal. It's taxable. It's okay, but regulates and put some sanity in it. It just doesn't look good. Let me take this call from Damola. Come to you, Maram. Damola from Niger State. Thanks for calling. Welcome, Welcome to the show. <laughs> I guess on volume. Yeah, um, what um, my justice is saying right now, she's so right. And then second, I have a, I have a, I have a situation. I have a situation at hand now. A family friend, hmm. a family friend. It has divided home. It has sent this guy on a. He's on. He has mental health issues because the wife and children have moved out of the house. Wow. This thing should be kicked again. It's a true life story, but I don't want to go into detail. Yeah. But this is a no, yeah. no, no for me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, you, know, you were talking earlier. I said that it's because. What, what makes it wrong is because it takes advantage of the vulnerable. It takes advantage of even your, your vulnerable time. Sometimes you start it just maybe as a you know, fun game, something you're even, even able to control it a bit. But after a while, it just hooks you in, and that's why it's wrong, because you know that there's no, there is no way it serves the person that is doing this. Um, I have a son that loves football. He's constantly watching football on TV, any kind of device he finds. The first thing he goes to is football. But guess what? As he's watching football, all these betting ads come up. And it has led to conversations with he and I on betting. You know, there was a time he would say, ah, I cannot wait. Wait, how old, uh, how old do I need to get to be able to bet? Because look at what they are winning. See what they are promising. Do you understand? So you are already trying to change. You are trying to catch them so young. My child is 12 years old, but this happened even much perfect. earlier. And that's what I find... Um, and, and, and that's what I find very dangerous. And this is not just, oh, it's happening on social media, even on regular television. And then they have their, what do you call it, their heroes, their football heroes, advertising this betting, mm -hmm. you know? So I feel that's when government needs to come in and regulate. Um, if it's taxable, you're earning your funds or whatever, you, if you're a child, you cannot be involved. That sort of um, information should not be sold to our children either. Exactly. Do not find any way to encourage it. And then... Um, the government can be more creative in looking for funds anywhere. I mean, sports makes a lot of money. Is it their merchandising? What is it that they don't, you know? There's, there are different things. People just love to even go to watch football. They pay for tickets and everything like that. Well, when um, you do something that involves, that involves almost breaking the spirit of your people, I mean, it does not make sense that you want the money from that sort of, um, you know, that sort of venture. Um, cigarettes, as much as we screamed and shouted about it, what they do now is, have you seen um, cigarette packs recently? They look really unattractive with um, lungs that are diseased and everything. You know, why can't we just not do 
why, why don't we just leave it completely alone? Because the thing is, no matter how, even how you regulate or make it look unattractive, if it's still there, it will just lead to something else. Finally, there's this um, documentary I watched on vaping. So vaping is supposed to be like the electrical, electronic way of, of, of smoking without the ills of um, cigarettes. At first, it made so much money. But now we're finding that it is even more dangerous to your health <laughs> than cigarettes. Yeah. But that was what this led to. So if something is not right completely, let's just do away so, with it. OK, I, I want to ask you, an adult will tell you that I can do adult things because I'm an adult. Mm -hmm. Pornography is morally wrong. But people in the huge industry is huge. So the truth is that there are many adult things, which is part of gambling, it's part of it, smoking. Not, these are things that they, 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 they contribute because there are people that want to do it. Mm. But if we look at it morally, we'll say it's wrong. But let me take this call. I'll come to you. Um, I think I have Bukola. Bukola, you're live. Thanks for calling. Good morning, sir. Yeah, in the world of betting, they always said I can't, I can't hear you, Bukola. It's really, really difficult to... It's breaking up. Yeah, yes. so I, I think um, betting, gambling, loto, I just want to put them because they all seem the same to me. In fact, I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah, I didn't know there was a difference too. Uh, it's just a lazy man's way of looking for money because that money you want to bet to win something big, if you put it into buying something and adding profit, you get money. But you don't want to go through that process. It seems like a lot of work to buy something and then market to somebody, Marian, please come and buy you, Moriah, please come and buy you, and then you get your profit. It's more work, and people want the easy way out most of the time. They don't want to put in the work. So what I tell young people is, that money you want to use to bet, is there something you know you like? something you can use, that you can buy and convince me to buy from you. And then I add money on top for you, and you make your profit. And if you do it consistently over time, you see that your money begins to grow. One of the ways some of us have been able to beat inflation today is because we have products. We put money into goods. Whether everybody's shouting, whatever is happening, the products are there, even if people don't buy. They, the day they will buy, I will still collect my costs and I'll collect my profits on top. And that also saves me from inflation. So it's just finding creative ways of getting that thing. What do you want at the end of the day? Money. The feel of money. Can we get this money in other healthy ways? That's one. Secondly, you cannot take away people's choices. Even God gave us an opportunity to choose. This is the apple of the tree of life and death. If you take it all, this is it. If you don't take it all, this is it. And man chose to take it and bear the consequences. According to the stories, that's the consequences we are facing today. However, we can teach the people around us, closest to us, that make the right choices. Because these things will continually be in your faces. You cannot mm. take it away. Some countries may say, because of their, maybe their religion and their rules, we don't want this in our country. And even if we must have it, it must be hidden. It must be done codedly. There are some country, Arabian countries that there are some things they don't glamour. Glamorize, right, yeah, but it's still done, but coded, coded, coded. People still find their way in those mm. countries to do it. We had uh, someone, um, a friend a long time ago, who was asking another friend to, ah, you can't access pornography in this country. Please, can you send me videos on so, 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 and so? You know, people still find a way to do it. So you can never stop individuals from doing what they want to do, yeah. but you can keep teaching the right things to do and hope and pray that your people, the clo people closest to you, the people who are listening to you, mm. will choose to do the right thing. Let me take Isaac and I come to you, Nima. Good morning, Isaac. Thanks for calling. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, sir. How are you? Good morning, sir. OK. Yeah, I want to contribute to the program first. Right? Yes. Go ahead. OK. You see, uh, this betting is not only for these people. I just want to correct an impression from what um, this he was saying, you know, it's not only a list. See, I want to tell you, and I know a lot of friends who are marketers in banking industry and they tell you, some of these that they are on, that they are on uh, target, that they have to meet some certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. I tell you, they, they bet. What they see from, and these people are high betters. Yeah. What they see from all that, oh, they can make money, they don't put their money into, into it. 
and make the money, and then if they are fortunate, they meet their target at the end of the month. This is what some of these uh, marketers in the bank, this is what they do as well. Mm -hmm. Many corporate guys are into betting, not just for lazy people. Yeah, and it's a very big something. Yeah, absolutely Thank correct. You. Absolutely correct. Can I, ask, can I ask him a question? Yes, it's right. Oh, he has oh, sorry. Right. I wanted to ask him what is what is pushing them into betting? What's the underlying? So the results. So, so, so the, the, me, I'm talking about the underlying yeah. reason. The to psychology, bet. psychology of it. There's a psychology to it. The sad part is that if that psychology you you keep keeps pushing you, you keep looking for that. Um, what's it called? Eldorado? What do you call it? Yes, Eldorado. The 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 winning. Yeah. And you don't get it. You can be suicidal at the end of yes, the day, which yes. is why yeah, it is dopamine. over, it, over it, important to regulate it. We, if not, if anything, regulate the advertisement of it. Mm -hmm. All these influencers, betting codes and all of that, it should be reduced to the barest minimum. You can have your child watching something online or a skit that you find funny. And midway into the skit, they just go on a it betting advert. It's educational. That yes. Comes up. It yeah. just comes up. Yes. And because regulated. we don't have these controls, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. These things are no, not we were working on it. So we need they to, want to do one law. They so we need to work on it. There are some food bottles that, that, you know, that we admire and respect, and I see them all, their faces of these different betting houses, yeah. they've been endorsed, giving a lot of money, and our children are looking up to them and thinking, okay, it looks That's like this particular person it. is making this money or from put yourself in the shoes of somebody who has maybe tried it once, because I know, I think it was a driver, somebody that used to many years ago, and he, he won about 250,000 naira. Mm -hmm. And for him, it was he a big deal. It. And where's the 250,000? No, 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 that's, 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 that's the besides the point. No, because it says that at that moment, he got that 250,000 naira and he what believes that mm. it's not about what he uses for, it's about no, he, got, no, he got it. No, no. Mariah, no, no. Actually, that is not the besides the point. What makes it a problem is what we are calling besides the point. That's the cocoa of the matter. What does it lead to? What does that make? What does it make him to do the next time? Mm -hmm. If someone puts his invests his money so into a business, solve problem with the, it. let's say someone invests their money into a business and they are learning how the business works, and then they get a profit. Oh, yeah, yeah. What the besides of that thing is that they put money back, back in there. The they are learning work. What did and they, they do that? Right? We don't know. Oh, no, 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 no. Let, Let me tell you something. No, it's not about so, we don't know. There have been there's data to they, show. This is a terrible thing. Somebody's sister. Went to liquidate her dollars to make 30 million naira he needed for a, 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 a admission abroad. Mm. They don't seek your admission. The money is supposed to sit in your account to show that you have the finances. Mm. The guy now thought, let me just quickly double their money. Mm -hmm. What's the underlying? Not give his sister 30 million to today. Eh, it don't go now. It have go. It have go. It have go. It have go. Listen, What's the went? It have go. The underlying reason, mm. whether you are that high psychology and mighty, or wait, quick, quick whether income. you are high and mighty. Or you are poor and low. The underlying reason that you want to bet is because you want to get extra. Quick. It's money. Fast, fast, if cash. If you like be a marketer, don't be a marketer. No work, plenty It's money. money. No work, exactly. No work, Let's, plenty No work, more money. That's the underlying reason. I'm also telling now, you, BC, there are some people that have gotten this. We are right. If I get the money today, I spend it on, on useless things. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some that get that money, pay bills with it. Mm -hmm. There are some that get that money, help to pay their mother's you get uh, the medical money. bills. Oh, there are some that, that get that money. So, after getting the money, and paying the bills. When it finishes. When it finishes, when it finishes well, they need to get another one. Is it they sell television. Tell me how you do for your income. sell car. No. Do you sell your car? You work for your money. your television. You sell your car. I need the one that you are not even sure to bet. You are not sure of. You carry your school fees. Something they just, somebody just worked hard to save. Give you. Give you. You say, let's just quickly yeah, double it. So that you can get Where something. is the guarantee? Where is that guarantee you are collecting it back? Not That's the mm. point itself. Yeah. Because what you just done, empower the company who's running the betting, whatever. Because the money is giving uh, volunteer, is, is giving with uh, your, your consent. You cannot come back and fight that. I did not know that I will lose the money. Mm -hmm. They owe 30 million. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a rebuke of the family. It shouldn't be. Ah. Yes, yes. You want to bring bad luck to the house. Mm. Ah. That's the meaning. Well, let's put it plainly as it is. That's quick try. Oh, you have worked for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Your employer has paid you a certain amount. You, you, are, your, you are going too far. Nima. Unemployed family you're going, member. You're going too far. It's not too far. Let me tell you why. why, why. Because <laughs> usually most gambling, 200 naira. It's not like nobody ah, nobody's going to say. It is less now. You go there, you cuisine it, Baba Jebu, whatever it is called. Mm -hmm. You take your 200 naira, you bet it. Mm -hmm. You win, you win some, you lose some, and that's it. So no, that is that yeah, one. That's not how And there are some electronic betting that I you like, get much more. That is a like a sane human being. That's not how it works. With your sanity, you will do only 200 naira. With this that you can carry. 
Exactly. Some people will look the risk that they cannot carry, put their entire life, father's inheritance. No, they use it to name even, it. Name, name even uh -uh. house rent. Even same mm. people that would not even want to be involved in gambling and betting like that have made mistakes with MMM. Mm -hmm. Is MMM, oh, remember? Yes, I've made those sort of yes, mistakes. These are people, at first, they're like, okay, let me just put a little, just maybe 5% ah, or 2%. Back. Then you get it back, all of a sudden, you're thinking of the possibility Thank of you. getting more. And this is you. You're a normal, sane person. You understand how this thing works. Same. You would never be caught gambling or stealing or betting, oh, but yes. here you are putting even more because it, it hooks you. It's an addiction. It's just like the way we talk, to, we, we talk about drug addicts. You took it the first time, let's say, and then you went away. You didn't feel anything. The second time, before you know it, that thing keeps bringing you back because you're unable to control it. And that's what makes it unethical, the betting, because you, the betting company, you understand what is happening. Mind, you know that this person is now at a level where they are unable to control to no. themselves. Yeah. And you don't care. You and they will do it to the detriment of their well-being and for Ooh. their family, and you don't care. So that's what this betting is about, and that's why it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's exploitative. Well, let's, let's take a few comments on, on the comments before we run a break. Uh, says uh, Mr. Abdul <laughs> said that, Mariah, life itself is a gamble. We wake up every day, <laughs> step out of the house to go to work, believing that the day will be fruitful. Mm. That's a gamble in itself. That's why we pray before going out. Going to school, trading contracts, our risk. I guess he's just trying to say that. Yeah. That uh, he's playing the devil's advocate. He said yes. so. Okay, okay, let's just I wanted to take care of and I'm going down to it. He says, no state has the right to ban it. There's a thing called fundamental right. Mm. It should be worked mm. against at an interpersonal family and religious and communal level, I mark myself safe from gambling. Yes, so you see, there's something, that, something that Miriam said, I don't, I don't want us to lose very quickly, because the, the, part, the, the part that those, the owners of the company, was even the the owners of the company don't really care about the gamblers. Mm -hmm. The advertisers, I mean, I was saying, I was oh, watching it, advertisers I say, turn your passion to wealth. Mm. You know, they use that catchphrase, yes. turn your passion to wealth. And you are there saying, oh, I need to turn this small money I have into wealth. Some people, somebody said, they mentioned here, the Maria, my father sold our TV, everything in the house for gambling. Yes, sir. Yeah, Some people use their children's school fees for the gambling. Collected so it's the fact that the company don't care what you have to sell. Mm -mm. Just come and turn your passion mm -hmm. to and bring it as by bringing adult. that money bring it as an adult yeah, yeah. yeah own wealth though. it's not, not about, about you so immaculate right. boy was responding to me he said dear ladies <laughs> betting like sex alcohol and smoking is not a sin or ill as nima said um, it is for 18 and above which is the age of reason and responsibility it's not there's anything. nothing wrong with its addiction like every addiction that is a worry yeah. The, the truth is, just he's, as you said, he has made a point. The comp no, not the point with the uh, mm. one analyze. So the company knows mm. that it's for 18 and above, which is what the law has regulated yeah. so far. And then, so you are adults, you walk in, they don't care whether you stole the money, you killed for it, it's blood money. Just they give money. Yeah. So they please, I think they should take your money least. down and you win or you mm. lose. Mm. You consented to trying. Yeah. So you knew you could either win or lose. You've lost. Go home. Go and try again. Yeah. They try for the rest of your life. You might never win. You might win one. Yeah. You might not win enough, yeah. but you know, you just come. Change so works. who is getting wealthier? Is it really empowering the yeah. people? Nobody. So Nobody. I, I 18 think is, that, 18, this 18 is that global are, age, everywhere in the world is global yeah. age, but we're well, not realistic, realistic good. in that age <laughs> because the human brain develops till 26. People should go and do the research. Ah. So if so only Nigeria brain, in the whole of the world, no, only Nigeria will change their own no, age. No, 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 There's nothing wrong with leading the way. People that brought the researchers, it's not even us because we don't no. do it. And there's nothing wrong with leading the way. Wait now, hold on. So that 18 yeah. is, for me, is a setup year for so many things. Mm. 18, you can take decisions. That's 18, it. you can do this. And we see our children getting spoiled because they can take decisions that make normally we would have guided them. But because they're 18, no, yes. everybody hands up. They should be looking. If you have your own child, if you want to release them as 18, it's your choice. Me? You will stay till you are cooked. Your so brain this is, has, this before is, I am releasing which you age do you think just the, like that. In the Bible yeah, and the Quran, it's supposed to be 40 years for the age of prophets. Do you want to wait for that? Age? No, no way. No, 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 not that I'm holding them, but 18, I'm paying bills. Hold on. No, but you know what the problem is? I would that. help them. Yeah. Mm. I would guide them into. Um, there were some decisions that adults helped me and yeah, guided yeah, me into I, I, that I, I, saved me from making some ridiculous yeah. mistakes if they had left me because I'm 18. But do you know the problem with that? What it means actually is that when they are 18, they don't need to listen to you. You. Anymore. So that's the problem. Mm -hmm. However, you want to cook them. If they don't yeah, want to enter the pot, they will not enter the pot. Let me quickly add something. <laughs> so the exploitative nature of the companies is the fact that they understand their numbers mm. and you can never beat them. So when you are starting, they give you beginner's luck. 
you win one, you win it's two. Automated. Oh, and you are hooked. It's automated. There's nothing like that, oh. They can't crack the no back. back. People Some of them have to say, your first three trials, movies. you get 5,000 back. Those movies uh, in the casinos mm -hmm. and see the kind of fights. They know the numbers yeah. that are going to win and mm -hmm. they can never make you, they will never lose as a company just because they want to satisfy yes. you. No. There's nothing automated yeah. there. It is orchestrated by ah. companies. Ah. They are Jew. No. 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 They are Jew. No. They are businessmen. They are capitalists. They are out to make profit. Before, okay. you know what? None of us are gamblers here. So I don't think we know anybody no, here no, can but speak we know for the industry. What do you mean? Our worry today is more of the, ah, you the want to effect. Bring industry calm down. <laughs> no, we have brought <laughs> industry person before the house. Please, can I can I can I can I can I drive this show? We drive your show. <laughs> <laughs> Our focus is the the more the effects mm -hmm. of this gambling mm -hmm. family. So the legality. The how it's been regulated, who is qualified, who is not qualified, how are, those things are things we can bring in regulators to shed more light to, so that Nigerians can understand. But are the, how it affects loved ones, people we know, people we know of, if this is what I want us to focus on. The, no, the betting place. companies, I don't, I don't know if the owners are, are into betting. You know, they say about drug, drug. That's drug, what we are drug, talking about. Drug traders. Mm. They don't, you don't eat from your own yeah, supply. You don't take from your own supply. Yeah. They will not want their they children to be those. involved in it. So, yes, the country or the society is telling you that it's legal. But as you are raising your children and children, you to listen. Mm. Listen. It will not pay you in any way. Mm. It's exploitative. It's meant to take away from you yeah. and break you until you have nothing left. They nothing. don't agree with us on Twitter. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> please. They tell us Take Twitter. Because they all says, there's nothing all immoral good. about betting. Tell them. Nobody is forced to bet. It is a choice. Wow. It's a heavily regulated industry. <clears throat> it is untrue that only the poor bet and it makes people poorer. Big time betting is reserved for the rich in society. Mm. Yeah. Someone is telling me money. between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. Hmm. A, a certain uh, company would open their betting. Hmm. And between that 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., they're raking almost 170 million now. Hi. That's daily. 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 See, daily. That's just one. That. Now, the multiple other companies, yes. all of them, probably something those similar figures. Yes. That's why this guy said that $2 billion annually is what this, this industry is raking. I want to now, even guess ask. What? Guess so what? We have, okay. Okay. We have that, influencers, okay. sorry. Okay. We have influencers <laughs> and all these people. <laughs> Who are faces for this betting company? Mm. I would like to ask us if a betting company were to approach you and decide to endorse you for millions and millions of naira, mm. would you do it? They have mm. approached me mm. last year. Yeah. They did. I don't want to mention the name. They approached me last year and I said I would not because it was against everything I believed in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be doing it because I want to make money. And then a few years down the line, my children now see it. Okay. It's and betting. Mm, it, mm, it, I, don't want, is a, I don't want my children to bet. However, you want to paint it. <laughs> Me, I don't want my okay. family members to bet. Okay, I get so that. they now see their mom advertising betting. Yes, and a few years down okay. the line, they start. The same and I cannot so say. The now, you, 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 now that you put it that way, yeah, I can I understand. Because I would have, I would have probably said yes if they could ask me to come and endorse. Yeah. I would have said there was no big deal. But so, putting it in the sense that I don't want my kids saying in the future, Mom, see, you did this. I wouldn't. So because of that reasoning, I would not do it. But I thought you said it's making money for government. Why would you not coming? You see, I'm, I'm just saying initially, mm -hmm. if they had approached me, I would have, I wouldn't say anything wrong because I'm an adult. If I want, if you feel you're going to pay me to endorse it, mm -hmm. for me, it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. But thinking about it deeply, as you have put it, where if I, I don't want my kids betting in the future, I don't want them to get addicted. Because I, I also have family members. Mm. They didn't do betting, but they got addicted to something mm. where they were selling everything they had. So wow. I know how addiction yeah, is right. actually called a gambling disorder. Yeah, yeah. It causes you can be suicidal, you Thank can be you. depression. So, ah, so there's so so the, the, the 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 wait now. This is a gambling disorder. We know <laughs> now. <laughs> so this gambling disorder, I don't want my child to have that. Yeah. So because of that, you just I will avoid, avoid it. Yeah. So I get that. So let me also add that. You see, um, the narration you just gave us, they start from eight to twelve your most productive hours. Mm. These people they have the sense. They, they know the game. They understand the psychology. So the you use your most productive hours that your brain will be hot to do things that will benefit you, even though you will suffer the suffer and see the suffer and the progress for a long time before it finally materializes. You use your productive hours to sit down in front of somewhere and be crunching numbers hey. for somebody to uh, be cashing out on your behalf. Be Let wise. me take this. India Basi, thanks for calling. I like that name. Inia Basi. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I greet all of you there. Yes, sir. Welcome you to know the show. You are well. Thank you, Gambling, sir. Gambling, i tell you something. There is no way they can stop it. It yeah. started from what do they, what do they call uh, uh, coupon. Coupon. From coupon what? to coupon. Yes. yes, coupon. To Lotto and Baba Yebo, now they think, i tell you something. 
They can't take it away. And I tell you something, it is, it is not good. Mm. Just as, as uh, Elijah said, it is for us to tell our children, our loved ones, who can hear and understand and stop it, we stop it. Many parents, any morning you see them in the Lotto house, you see them in the Baba Yebo house, just like as if it's the house. Focus in how to focus these numbers to get it. It's not a small something. I tell you. Thank so you very much. Somebody asked a question here that, Morel, what if the ch your, the, your children own a multi-billion dollar betting company? Would you divorce them? Your children. Your children grow up, they raise their, your, your kids grow up you have, to, to start a multi-billionaire betting company. Really they said they are adults. Adults. Yeah, no, you said that they are adults. adults that's what we are, that's what we are talking today. Ah. I thought you were talking with two sides of your mouth. No, we're not talking. Did what, I, what do you want us to do? my children will do in this life that I will divorce okay, them. And their mother so, can't divorce your children. So, no, you're going to no, I mean, separate yourself from them. I, or you call them out. Them. You know, why Parents are always... Call, see, forget even the... How about if the child grows up and is now a better and is losing money? Uh -huh. Will you divorce the child? Oh. You, will you will still be there to work on the child. You will still talk to the child. I do not think this is right. You don't want your child to be involved in something that is ethically, ethically not acceptable. I would not want my child to put in all their intelligence and all their brilliance in betting yeah, when they can do better something. things for Nigeria. This Nigeria that we're still struggling, struggling, struggling. We want to go to the moon too. Uh -uh. All the tweets that we're, I'm reading. Why can't we go to the moon? To the Why will we be doing better? It's a matter of choice. Mm. Leave it to the individual and it's hard Because no, serious societies <clears throat> where serious things happen, don't leave everything to one individual. Yeah. And so based on my bias, I just wake up today. I don't like Morales wig. Cut it. I just wake up today. Born business dress. You can't live things. You regulate normal lives. Yeah. You compel people to live lives that are Dr. healthy. Max. We have to wrap up on this. Go ahead. Dr. Dr. Max says, not every single person who bets will suffer the negative impact. But the data is overwhelmingly more negative as regards the effects of betting. The logic is simple. In the long run, the house alone wins. You are far more likely to lose yeah. and you have learned no scale. Nobody Finish. I like Finish. I love the way you said it. Fantastic. I think we can wrap up on this, but I think generally the truth is, I mean, again, there are lots of things that adults do. Adults make choices, smoking choices, alcohol choices, pornography choices, things that morally people will say it's not right. But all we can say is appeal that we don't engage, let our children be engaged in these immoral acts. Gambling is addictive, it's destroyed families, it causes depression. There's something called a gambling disorder that actually leads to suicide sometimes where people are owing, um, they are owing money and people who kill themselves, you see them jumping over the Milan Bridge, they're wondering what happened. Mm. Sometimes it's because of Even, betting. Yeah. Sometimes so loan. These are things that we need to look at and from society, aside from the regulating part. We also have to see the, the, the other side of it where it affects family. And someone needs to start doing some research into this is how we can help families to overcome gambling disorders in our country. I think that's all we can take on this segment. When we come back, move on to another topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So now we have in the studio with us Mr. Ola Oresonya. He is the Honorable Commissioner for Environment in Ogun State. He will be discussing with us what the state is doing to combat the severe flooding situation around the border communities of the state, especially Sherry, Opik, Kara, and others. He will also be unveiling the state's plan in tackling the annual menace and also addressing the ugly situation that has rendered up to one million of the citizens homeless. Welcome, sir, to our show. Good to have you, Mr. Oresoya. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to be here. Too. So we've been, in the past few years, we've been waiting for somebody from Ogun State mm. you know, Council because we have so many questions. Mm. Aside from the environmental issues, we have issues concerning the roads, but we'll come to that in a moment. I just can touch a few things on that. But first, let's right. start with this recent flooding mm -hmm. um, that happened, uh, especially in that Kara yeah. area. Okay. Um, and, and, and every single year we have something like this. Could you, what, what is the government doing to combat this, um, this flooding that we see almost every year? Well, thank you very much. Um, if you look at the Kara flooding, 
It's um, a kind of a river flooding that comes almost every year. And uh, the first thing is in solving any problem, you must first of all be able to have a proper diagnosis of the, what, what, the, what the problem is course, before yeah. you ascribe any form of solution. And I think that's exactly uh, where we are to really pin it down on something, you know. Uh, before now, everybody explained this issue to look is uh, the dam, 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 and it's like uh, people believe that you just lock down that dam so that people downstream can, uh, can enjoy themselves. But really, the dam is what has been saving downstream. The dam is there to, to, to manage uh, 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 the, the flow, I mean, flood control. Okay. And uh, that dam has just been a kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's more of an uh, asset than a liability, Don't if you look at it, yes. Now, the key thing causing the problem there is that, you know, we, what, what we have around there, the Ogun River is a very old river, uh, meanders around there, so, and uh, most of the settlement there, that within the watershed, you know, it's just a little island where you have uh, uh, various river that cuts across uh, those areas. You have the Okparo River, you have the Ogun River, and uh, you have there's a plateau where people settle down there. So it's a floodplain, as it is. Uh -huh. All right. And there are rules of engagement where you want to build and settle in a floodplain. Okay. You can live there, but there are rules of engagement. You have to uh, elevate at. Then you work with the tidal fluctuations. Okay. All right. And uh, the tidal flow is a natural phenomenon that comes. Um, um, almost every day you have a fluctuating tide, tidal waves, and uh, this thing comes from the sea and affects the lagoon, uh, where you have a high tide in the morning and you have a low tide in the <clears throat> evening. But usually around September, October, usually have this uh, uh, excessive tide, you know, excessive high tide. And uh, the last October, the last one we had, uh, we had the low tide setting at about 1.5 meters and the height was um, almost at about 3.5 uh, around October 10, October 11, October 15 uh, uh, last month. And that means Ogo River itself cannot flow into the, cannot empty itself into the lagoon. So it has to backflow. Okay. And it will go naturally into this area, which is a natural wetland. Okay. And the people who are settled there, some of them, or most of them are at a lower level. So they have a this flood. All so, of the communities affected is the River Valley Estate and the, yes. You know, so those are communities we, we visit during the dry season. I'm wondering what is the water channeling like, drainage channels like yeah. in those communities that you know it is getting worse worse. Let us look at in every every year. What are the drainage channels like? And is there a possibility of properly channeling such that other communities that are dry could benefit from the, the, the opening of the dam instead of you know, it, it becoming destructive as it is now. We are, yes, we are closer to the solution now than, uh, than before because I think uh, so far now we've been able to transfer the area. And uh, along that river itself, you know, um, almost uh, uh, emptying itself after Isheri before... Um, uh, before entering to Lagos, you have a kind of a hunch, okay, underneath that river, such a kind of an elevation that's almost damming the river back. So we have to open that hunch itself to enable the speed of discharge of that river downstream. So we've done that profiling the last few weeks. Then again, the area itself has to be at an elevated level. Uh, there are some of the streets in the community where they now have a road that are constructed at elevated levels. Those areas are not affected. You know, they had uh, this uh, normal flow. And it's not just, Isheri is the most visible to you. We have Makogi, we have uh, Magbara, uh, Magbo, uh, uh, Magboro, we have uh, Arepo, we have Orimerumu, uh, and many of these communities around this area. Almost like a flat plain uh, when you go around this area. And you have rivers, several other rivers bordering those areas and trying to empty itself into the lagoon. So all these areas, you have to operate there at a level, at a higher level. Look at the express trade, the way it's constructed. It's almost higher than the settlement. Yes. <clears throat> and that tells you the profiling done okay. by the engineers who made that road. Know that, look, you have to raise this road up, otherwise there's going to be flood. 
on it. So every settlement around there must run with that datum mm. and operate at the higher level there. So we've had a lot of error of judgment and uh, people are now uh, looking into the scientific consideration uh, before constructing those areas. Mm. So, so who, are, who is supposed to be in charge of looking into the sci scientific consideration before um, Proving. Before, yes, bef before they start to develop the what government uh, parastate are supposed to make sure that it's, it's whatever development that happen around there is done, putting the scientific factors into consideration. Well, yeah, we, we, we have uh, like uh, Ministry of the Environment, uh, Ministry of uh, Urban Development and Physical Planning. So what has been the challenge? Why haven't we seen their impact in this situation? Well, like I said, yeah. Maybe uh, there have been error of judgment in the time past. You know, you, I mean, uh, when, you, when, when you take decisions, you have to have uh, science-based, uh, well-informed decisions before you advise people. And apart from that, too, even before you, the developer itself, you know, you go extra mile to even uh, uh, allow professionals to advise you in those areas. So as a government now, we're trying to correct the error of the past. And which is very possible. Government is a continuum. Yeah. So we have to inherit uh, whatever you errors of the you. past and make sure that we'll correct it in the interest of the people who are settled there. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, admit uh, that, yes, maybe in the time past there are omissions from the government side, but the government of the day must correct it for the benefit of the people. So how uh, responsive are the individuals within those areas in responding to, you know, sometimes I know the government will warn that the flood is about to come, yeah. relocate mm -hmm. your families, mm -hmm. find somewhere else to stay in the higher lands and then come back. How do they respond? And is there any form of compensation to the loss of properties, loss of lives, likely? Well, you know, uh, we, we, we have a very cynical uh, population. <laughs> you know, people are very cynical, maybe because of the trust uh, yeah. deficit yeah. Uh, between uh, uh, the, 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 the government and uh, the people. So when government says something, people are very cynical about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we gave a, a flood alert in April this year, and we always do every year, warning people that, look, and in particular, we mentioned the areas that will have this impact. And um, what we're doing there is that while working towards a solution, that's an adaptation that you need to do mm -hmm. to either, uh, I mean, to, to minimize uh, the tendency for lamentation. You know, why lament when you were aware that this was going to happen? Mm. So we would rather celebrate lamentation than prevent this thing from happening. Mm. Government said, look, relocate from those areas or elevate. If you must stay there, elevate. operate at a higher level. Mm. Are you getting me? So that this water will come. Uh, the, 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 the tide was uh, in October, went as far as about 3.5 meters. And the low tide was at about 1.5 meters. So that means that low point, uh, 1.5 meters, that, that would be the level which the water would come. It will come overnight. Usually the tide comes in the night. Mm. And this thing will come, which will stay just for a few days and it will go. Go to those areas right, that the water is already regressing and everybody will go to sleep again. But we are, not going to, we are not going to sleep. We are going to work and make sure that we don't encourage this kind of lamentation every year. We have a reputation. Well, estates like this, you yeah. think, like, how does somebody relocate? How do you move from an estate? You think, okay, do how you do you even rebuild? How do you start, how do you start elevating? Start, how do you start elevating? You just think to yourself, like, it sounds nice on paper to elevate, yes. but in, in practical terms, who, how? Well, we have houses there that have done that. They're building their structure. Maybe before they even constructed it, their structure. They were at the higher level. They were aware of it. But the but access the road, road is not. Yes, yes, and that's the government side, and which we are going to do. And the governor already gave a marching order to the commissioner. Come and make roads there at a higher level. Okay. All right? That's a government responsibility. Because most of these estates are government uh, residential estates. Uh, and uh, some of the areas that are not even residential estates, yes, our development there will okay. take cognizance of the kind of elevation which you will do. So there must be access, which is government responsibility, to your property. And you have a responsibility also to elevate your, your structure yeah. mm -hmm. to make sure you make the place habitable. Okay. Every One thing I know. Let me take this call from Yakub. Yakub, thanks for calling. You're live. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Morning. Morning. Good morning to Honorable Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable, I think uh, you are very conversant with uh, other sides, first place. Make us other sides, first place. 
this kind of situation that we are seeing on the television here now, it also happened immediately after Congo Bridge, it just looked precisely. A little water, a little water, if this rainfall within, let's say, less than one hour, that place is, is not moving within. Everywhere will be flooded. And then, I think you were the chair of the Mr. Governor. I, will, I heard that the Governor of Ogun State has promised to take up that very particular rule. Please, we are thanking you to Mr. Governor. How long this road is going to be? Because we are passing through here. If it is, as a, as a commissioner, I, I, I would like you to even come from other down to Lagos. If you, if you pass that road, the following day you are going to fish it. Even though you are using private, whatever you are using, you are going to fish it. Good morning. If it is, All right. So, yeah, go ahead, please. Respond to him. All right, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think at uh, the area we are talking about, Georgia, I visited the area myself. What we have there, that's an urban flooding. It's got nothing to do with a coastal flood. It's a flash flood issue. And what we have there is a construction defect along the express road. Okay, the discharge point for storm water in that area has been blocked. Okay, where you can empty to. And uh, for that area, you empty that area along the estuary. There's a secondary collector there that empties itself towards the old toll gate. Whatever you collect around that area must run along the estuary towards the old toll gate. We find out that the balance drain, there are a lot of uh, channels underneath that estuary that have been blocked completely. They've not been maintained for several years. And uh, we are working on maintaining that area. So I'm aware of the area where you're talking about, sir. And uh, part of the construction uh, work we're going to do there, we will take cognizance of the, the redesigning of the kind of, uh, 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 I mean, the drainage channels along those areas. Yeah, Thank you very much. I was going to say, with, um, with flooding and, you know, mm -hmm. environmental degradation actually mm -hmm. happens maybe at a faster level. So yeah. I'm wondering, so those who have elevated, how long would that elevation last for? Like, is it, you know, you know, it rises nearly every year or every decade, you know, the um, water rises and maybe the soil degrades over time as well. Is this something you say to them, if you elevate to this point, this should be able to carry you 10 years, this should be able to carry you 20 years, just so that they are aware, aware of what the risk are or whatever the situation is, is in future? It's a perpetual ele elevation. You keep elevating. You elevate along the tidal fluctuation right over there especially at the sherry area the highest uh you can go with the tidal law is at about 1.5 meters so if you're going to elevate your building uh, uh, must be elevated at least two meters above the baseline so whether you have even have the tidal lock at about 1.5 meters backflow it will never get to your house mm. it will stay within the drainage channel that will be created over there. Okay. So it's a perpetual elevation. <coughs> Let me take this call from Ola. He's calling from Akute. Thanks for calling, Ola. Thank you, my sister. You're live. Good Go morning. ahead. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, thank you too for, for coming. Thank you, sir. The, my observation, madam, is what the commissioner is saying that the governor has given, the governor has given nothing. Come to Akute, madam. Come to Akute. The flood is washed there. The, the, the drainage, the government are not even taking care of that drainage. If the drainage has been taken care, the flow will not even affect people at that Akute. There is nothing. Even the road the government has uh, constructed is uh, last uh, for fourth panel. The road is still here. Nothing. The problem, the, the problem that the government is saying that, that the government has given this reason, the government has given this reason, is just the paper instruction. We don't even go to the side and see what is going on. And what people are facing. Come to the broker. Come to Akuti, come to Alala Bolisa, the fraud is here. Because the DSS and the community is saying that people are blue. Thank you very much, Ola. So, aside yeah. from the flooding issue, possibly in Akuti, just to add to, because I was yeah. saying that we always have issues, YK mm -hmm. is here almost every day. Talking about that Alak Bule rule. Right. Yes. They said right. they've tried, the government even came himself, according to her, and she was hoping that something would happen overnight or, I mean, would start immediately. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. But nothing happened so far. So, could you give us an update on what's going on with that Alak Bule rule? All right, fine. Well, uh, let me make an attempt to talk uh, uh, for, the, for the Commissioner for Works, because I was there the day the, the governor went there. We saw clearly there that um, uh, from under the bridge there uh, towards Alak Bule Road, 
you could see that even the old road that was there, it was the drainage that destroyed that road. Most of the drainage channels that were blocked mm. with several debris and everything, and that there was so much saturation on the road. It to, the water and uh, asphalt, were, they are never friends. All right, so we have to do so many things. Immediately, government gave an instruction, so there was a bit of palliative that was done there. The real construction will start. Now, uh, if the government <laughs> come and give an instruction right there, yeah, it may happen with fiat, but then there's a process where the thing must go through. If you don't have any budget, okay, and uh, you are spending money for a project without a budget, you start, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be accused of misappropriation. All right, so what the governor did at that time was to make sure that we include that alagbole in the budget. And uh, what I can just tell our friend from Akuti, alagbole, please be on the lookout. I appreciate your, um, your, your cynicism, let me put it that way. Uh, people have this uh, trust deficit uh, when it comes to government promises. But in this particular case, I'm sitting here and I'm telling you, I'm putting my name on the line. Be on the lookout. I like Bali project will go on. All it's right. No I want to know if Fantastic. Uh, we'll take it from state you. government is considering, I know it's huge, yeah. dredging hmm. the Ogun River, because they used to do that at the River Niger, but I've not heard any government do it recently. Or creating the, you know, what is it, what is it called? The controlling, building mm -hmm. pavements along that line of the river so that you control and keep the water within. Is there any such project in view? Yeah, what you're referring to is a dike. Mm. We call it dike, like dike, a mole yes. by the river bank. Mm -hmm. What we want to do for Ogun River, dike is part of the project with the federal government. We are pushing this towards the federal government, the inland waterways, to at least increase the withholding capacity of that river. Exactly. You would, we have to dredge. The river is old. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of uh, uh, fluvial uh, uh, action, <laughs> activities in that area. That means a deposit. Okay, of alluvial deposit in that area. It's mm -hmm. a lot of sediments. So we just have to excavate, trench that area, clean it up, open it up, get a, a, a greater uh, depth mm -hmm. so that the, instead of holding like a, just put a value to it, 100 cubic meter per hour, mm -hmm. you can increase capacity to 500 cubic meter per exactly. hour for that river mm -hmm. by creating a dike and uh, going towards right. a, uh, a particular depth. So. Yeah. These are part of the thing on, on the pipeline that we do. That's so Let me take three. Okay. Let me take Boston. Boston, thanks for calling your live. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Once again, my name is Boston. I'm calling from Porta. Okay. Yeah. Otu Ori in Porta is another very terrible area when it's clean. When it's clean, it will be as if the whole of the dam in the good state has been standard to that Otu Ori. So in fact, I mean, I even pretty students coming from school at that period, many mm -hmm. Then there's another place at Ijulov, when you are going towards Atom. Ijulov, as soon as you go inside, just about 200 uh, meters, going, that Ijulov going inside, there's this bridge there that is damaged very close to one small abattoir there. In fact, the place will float us that you will see people holding each other to pass through that place. And that uh, water, I think, that is one that goes to go and link with the one from two gates. So the government needs to do a lot of work in this area. Generally speaking, I'm not a, I live in Ogun State, and I'm an idiot of Ogun State, but I'm not happy with the way roads are in Ogun State. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. We definitely know this is not the commissioner for work, so Thank you very it's much. important that just to give us, just to give you feedback mm -hmm. to your yes, colleagues. Yes, I know, so I know. know the issues that well, I'm Well, I'm a member of the executive council, exactly. so these are things we discuss, and I think I, I have an idea okay. of uh, what our plans are. Do you know the program. area he's talking about? Oh, yes, yes. That water from Ojuri leads to was Ilo, Ilo Ajegule. I know that area, and that's part of the areas we are going to dredge. We've been able to dredge so many areas around that area. Okay, and uh, but we are yet to finish. You can't finish all the job in one year. I mean, you're going to say it's so large, it's so big. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my question. Where I was going to ask, exactly. I was going to ask, we know it may take more than a year, Thank but you. are we saying two, three years? And what are the things we will see immediately, at least as a palliative, leading to the well, final well, completion of the job? You know, what, what we're <laughs> doing is that, first of all, let me follow what's out with the road. They are economic roads, they are roads that lead to interconnectivity. 
you have to give priority mm. to that road. Roads that lead to school, yes. hospitals. Markets. Yes. But many people, until you construct the road in front of my house, you have not done anything. <laughs> Everybody will tell you that until my road is done, done you have not done anything. Even when you have done so much. So all we can just do to tell people is oh, please be patient. What we've done the last four years was to do roads that connect cities, that connect uh, areas of importance, a roads that have a, of high impact roads. Okay, but a lot of people are still grumbling, my road, my road, my road, my road. Everybody will call you about their roads. We know, we'll listen. The next phase of roads right now are the intra-city roads. Yeah. Okay, and that's the next phase. Thank God the administration has a second time to do that. So okay. people should just be on the lookout. You get that relief. Be patient. Okay. For the drainage, for the drainage channel, for that area, uh, Ilo, Ilawe area, that area, that river goes towards Ajegunle, which you have the main catchment, that's the storm catchment that leads to uh, uh, the Lagos Lagoon. Yeah. So we're aware of that area. Okay, sir. So are they, I wanted to find out if there are farmlands that uh, some of this water can be channeled to. Is there any farmlands around those areas that you can identify and say we'll find a way to channel the water from the dam into the farmland? No, no, no. no. You, 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 you don't channel water to farmland. Okay. That's solving one problem to create another one. Okay. By the time you channel storm water into farmland, you cannot farm there again. Mm -hmm. You have a flood in there. So food... No, uh, no, no, no. There's the, a way... The, from the dam. You know, the dam holds back water. Okay. That's right. And instead That's of upstream. releasing it every year to, mm -hmm. to just, you know, to, to empty the dam, mm -hmm. can we have that water operational? Continuously going as a farm, some there's something is called farm irrigation yeah. to farms. Yes, uh -huh. if you go to on your dam, I was there. Okay, up in there, two three locations. Mm -hmm. What you have there going on upstream of any dam is irrigation. Mm -hmm. You detain water at a dam mm -hmm. okay. to allow irrigation to allow uh, mm -hmm. even uh, livestock production, maybe fishing mm -hmm. and the rest of it, even for dam production and even for water supply. Right. Yeah. Those are the things you use dam for, and I think on your dam is doing practically most of it, except the electricity that is not doing. Okay. Let me take this call from Alak Bully again. Daniel, thanks for calling. You're live. Yeah, thank you, Morayo. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I appreciate the commissioner that you are hosting on your show and the way he has spoken. Uh, I appreciate him, the commissioner, yes, you know, that has spoken. Uh, I just want to say that the governor, Governor Diodon, should do something about on Lambert Road, on Lambert, Okia Road, and that the other day I went to that area. I couldn't take my car to my destination. I have to think about two or others. You know, the, the road is in a serious bad state, and something should be done urgently. You know, Governor Diodon is a gentleman. And I know a number of people love him, but he needs to do more in Ogo State. So many roads are dilapidated in Ogo State, and something has to be done. People are not happy. People are not happy. Even at Juma Road, I like to let, you know, to Ajumon, Ajumon to Afrika, then go to Ola, then go to Adadio, go and see the state of roads there. People are weeping, both old and young, yeah. and that's not good. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're getting this feedback from, from Nigerians calling in so far. Um, okay. how, how, I would even want to know what, what, what's the future plan when it comes to environment for um, Ogun State? What, what is there a master plan concerning what you plan to do to make all these changes sustainable? Yes, um, I think I was talking about our roadmap and, uh, and our vision, really, uh, is to make Ogun State the, the state uh, has the highest level of livability. When it comes to livability, you're talking about um, sustainability, both in uh, environment, economics, and uh, the, I mean, the social uh, governance. All right, so when it comes to environment itself, the ecosystem, Ogun State is highly industrialized. It's the most industrialized state in Nigeria. Really? Is the most wow. yes. you, the I'm number sorry. of industries. That is where you have the oh, highest right. number of industries yes. in Nigeria. Oh, that tells you about emission control, okay. pollution management. So our institution to manage pollution, we strengthen that institution so that we, as much as we make the state friendly, investment friendly, 
we avoid pollution so that people can live in Ogun State and still enjoy themselves. Yeah. Talking about uh, uh, waste management, yes. top notch. It must be top notch. So cleanliness. What does so that mean? That means our aspiration is to be the cleanest state in Nigeria. And very soon we are getting there. The structure to take us there is on ground. Talking about circular let's economy. Tell you, let's break down that structure. Yeah, it's what's a bit the, What's it like? Vague. Is it recycling? Is it collection? That's, it that, that's where I'm going. Now? All right? That's where I'm going. Mm. Recycling is a component of what we call the circular economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I talk about our environmental sustainability. Mm -hmm. It ties with the economy. So if the economics is not right, nobody will want to do the environment issue does not mean anything. So the sustainability there, the economics of it, which is the recycling. Make, I mean, we have the largest uh, recycling industry in Nigeria for now. Yes. Okay. The largest, all the industries that recycle in Nigeria, they are right there. We, 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 we recycle over 1,300 tons of plastic daily, mm -hmm. over 1,000 tons of paper daily and over 1,200 tons of ferrous and non-ferrous metals daily in Ogun State. I use the word daily. All the industry, those, this material comes from all over Nigeria, mm -hmm. but they get there because Ogun State, yes, these are, uh, this industry has space to operate, okay? Now, from within Ogun State itself, we are making sure that our, our, our recycling program will be top-notch so that people can get value for going to recycling. And these industries, all their products, most of their products, okay, that they don't want again, they are able to reintegrate it for people that will recycle it. So we have a lot of vendors who are doing it. So it's the main focus and the main drive to create economy out of environmental governance. Okay, fantastic. I think that's all we can take on today's show. Thank you so much. You've heard My from pleasure. the commissioner himself. Definitely environmental issues will be top notch. Thank At you. least that much we're taking away from this conversation. Thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank Bye you for tomorrow. now.